Howdy everyone, Roger says hey too. So I did a video a few days ago on the Vulcan Bomber, explained by Captain Joe, and in that video I saw some escorts for the Vulcan Bomber that were red in nature, and I asked you guys what those planes were. You told me they were called the Red Arrows, and I should check them out, and you know what? We're gonna do that today. <laughs> Now I explained in the video where Captain Joe explained the Vulcan that there's just something about the Air Force and planes that I really really like. I think for me being a Star Trek fan it kind of represents progress in the human race. You know getting off the ground, taking flight, going into space. And the Air Force is usually associated with like more technology and going into space actually. So I think that that's probably one reason why I'm so drawn to planes. The thing is I don't really know a lot about them, I just know that I like them. <laughs> I did have an aunt and uncle in the Air Force, so not that that has anything to do with this, it's just that, you know, I have some family ties to the Air Force. Anyway, the Red Arrows are apparently part of the Royal Air Force, and I think they are akin to the Blue Angels, maybe, over here. If so, I'm really looking forward to this. I love watching, like, stunts being done with planes. I just love looking at the formations and just the difficulty level that, I don't know, it appears to have. So you guys recommend several videos of the Red Arrows, and I think some of you recommended this one we're going to watch. It's the Red Arrows North American Tour 2019. It's the full documentary. It's about 22 minutes long, so I think we should be able to fit it into this video pretty well. I'm hoping that it's going to show more than just the formations, though. I always like learning the background and kind of the behind-the-scenes stuff, so maybe they'll show, like, the people in the flight squadron. They'll show kind of what their training is like, what their days are like. Maybe show us a little bit of the inside of the planes, stuff like that. But it's also interesting learning about the different military aspects of other countries because obviously I'm familiar well, not super familiar, but obviously I'm more familiar with the Blue Angels being an American. And the army, I think, has the Thunderbirds or something like that as well over here. I think that they fly red planes, actually, now that I think about it. But I digress. Let's get back to the Red Arrows and their Royal Air Force. It should be fun to see how another country does it. Eleven weeks, 25 cities, crossing a continent, flying the flag. Oh, that's so cool. Sorry to pause it right away, but in the other video, I didn't get to see the details of the plane. All I saw were just kind of like the red planes. I didn't get to see any of the little details on them. I see now that there is the, the British flag is on the uh, back of the, of the tail. That's really cool looking, actually. Continent flying the flag over iconic landmarks. This is a day that I'll never ever forget. And some of the biggest air shows in the world. I've kind of got to pinch myself a little bit. <laughs> Representing Britain. The buzz around here is incredible. As the Red Arrows travel across North America. Well, wow. you know, the funny thing is, I don't know if you call it funny or not, but, you know, our colors are red, white, and blue as well. So I, I feel like if, if any, like, average American was on the ground looking at this and they had no idea who the red arrows were, they probably think that that was representing America. <laughs> Just a thought. The red arrows have been in North America for seven weeks. 12 Hawk jets and 106 personnel are on tour. As That's they so fly cool into looking. Seattle, past the city's iconic Space Needle, it's the team's first ever visit to the city. Hmm. That is so cool. With the backdrop of the city, the, the mountains, Boeing field, and everything the crowds too. have come out to greet them. This stop on their tour is all about business. We're on the west coast. Oh, is that the, uh, what's that crest on the side of the plane? Is that, I, I was going to say like the crest of England or something, but that might, that's probably not right. I'm not sure what that is. We're on the west coast. Uh, we were displaying just recently the furthest west the team's ever displayed. It's been incredible, really, it has. And we're doing quite a few displays, quite a few fly-pasts. 
but we're doing about 100 ground engagement events. So that's by far the biggest thing of the tour. There's stuff on the ground, which is so beneficial. This is flying the flag. The guys are ambassadors for the UK. And it's all about that relationship, that special relationship we have, UK, US uh, relationship. And that's not only defense relationship and aerospace, but other industries as well. The Red Arrows have already performed displays and fly paths over some of the continent's most famous landmarks. Now on the west coast, their packed schedule continues. Oh, I also learned from you guys that the, um, I called it a logo in one of my other videos. I can't remember which video it was actually that I called it. I think it, I don't think it was the Vulc, was it the Vulcan? I don't remember what if, if it was. But you guys told me that 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 um, REF logo was called a roundel. Actually, I called it a logo for lack of you know I'm, I'm completely ignorant about what all of the, mil the correct military terms are for this stuff. But a roundel is what it's called, um, and I I learned also also recently that that's the roundel for I guess the Royal Air Force. But you guys said that that encompasses more than just the Royal Air Force, just kind of like any I guess air equipment under the British military, maybe something like that. You might have to clarify that for me in the comments. Every single week we've had something that would be on a normal normal year on the Reds would be the highlight of the year. But this this tour just keeps on giving. There's great things. Niagara Falls fly pass was pretty epic to, wow. to see the guys over there. It's Red Ted and Circus 10 got some great shots. The Hudson fly pass. So going down the Hudson, you've got New York there flying with the Thunderbirds, flying with the stealth jets, the F-22s and F-35s behind us. We've had a 20 Are those American displays. jets or? There's lots of fly passing there, but over 100 ground engagements. So by far the biggest part of this tour has actually been on the ground. You know what it is about these planes too? They're just so cute looking. <laughs> and I don't mean that in like a disrespectful way. It's just like the way that they're shaped and they're, they're smaller as well too. So they just have like a little cute little figure to them too. And I think it just adds to their appeal. But maybe acrobatic planes in general are like that. You know, they're not quite as mean looking as like the you know, stealth fighters and all of that stuff. Seattle well, has a long history of aviation. It's home to companies like Boeing, Coast which is building the RAF's new P-8 maritime patrol aircraft. It has its own museum of flight and even Ricebeck High School, a secondary school which teaches its students all about the world of aviation and aerospace. Well, good afternoon, Ricebeck Aviation High School. Hello. One of the tour's main aims is to help promote science, technology, engineering and maths and to show off the opportunities available. There's plenty of questions and everyone is keen to see the jets up close. So it's been like a whirlwind literally since we landed at lunchtime. We did a little bit of a meet and greet here at the museum, which was impromptu. It's just that there were so many people here, so we had to get going. And then we went to Raysbeck Aviation High School. Actually, the interaction is more special than the flying. The passion over here for the armed forces and demonstration flying is like it's nothing I've seen before. The Red Arrows are only in Seattle for 24 hours. No sooner have the students left then defence, aviation and industry representatives start to arrive. Last year, trade and investment between the UK, Canada and the US totaled more than $260 billion, and this tour hopes to help build on that. For the team, it's another busy night. The next morning, the jet... What is this on the uh, windshield? It looks really cool, but I, I'm assuming that it is used for um, navigation or something like that. But uh, it's a very, stra very strange shape. We have a, like an arrow with these zigzag lines uh, through them. So we have two, ac actually two arrows, a big one and a smaller one inside of that. So very, very interesting windshield, actually. The next oh, morning, the, the jets the set off for Canada, performing flypasts over Vancouver and Victoria waterfront and visiting more schools and businesses on the ground. Further south in the United States, the rest of the team's engineers and support staff, known as the Blues, are preparing for the jet's arrival at one of the most iconic air bases in North America. At the Californian Strike Fighter Base, made famous in the film Top Gun, Marine Corps no. Air Station. I th thought it was going to be like one that I've heard of a lot. It's not. 
we don't really don't hear about that one very much over here. I feel like there's a, there are two or three air bases that are famous, like uh, Joint Base Andrews. There's another one out in California that's really famous too, and I can't think of it off the top of my head. Yeah, I, Miramar. I guess it's famous from Top Gun. You know what? I don't even know if I've seen that movie all the way through. I feel like I've seen scenes from it, but I've never watched the whole movie. Made famous in the film Top Gun. Marine Corps Air Station, Miramar. This station is home to the 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing. Its yearly air show attracts 300,000 visitors. For 2019, the Red Arrows are their special guests. There's a buzz of excitement as the jets mock their arrival in style. They even park in formation. <laughs> That's so cool. So are there usually two pilots in each one, or is one support crew? This Miramar, I mean, I grew up looking at this place. I mean, there's two things growing up. One's clearly the film and this place, and the second is watching the Red Arrows. <laughs> so to put the two together and be here, yeah, I kind of got to pinch myself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's jazzed. I've never been here. I've been to LA once before and flew over San Clemente, but to come here to Miramar, you know, the, the home of such an iconic film. And, probably the one that got most of the guys and girls interested. How is this so iconic? How I, I'm totally oblivious to this iconic airbase and maybe it's because I haven't seen the film all the way through, but I, even if I had seen the film, I don't know if I would like call it super iconic or whatever. I, now I have to go see Top Gun. In the military and, and here we are for what is going to be an amazing weekend. The Red Arrows are now some 6,000 miles away from home on the penultimate leg of their tour along the west coast of the United States. And no trip to California would be complete without a stop here in San Diego, the home of Top Gun, and a location for one of their biggest military air shows of the tour so far. They really like Top Gun. The Red Arrows can expect a packed crowd over the weekend, but the team have arrived a pilot short. Just before leaving Canada, Red 2 Flight Lieutenant Damo Green had to fly home for the birth of his daughter. Oh. And the show must go on without him. The team will be under pressure to make their display work with a missing jet. Yeah, that's not fun. As the pilots debrief, the team's engineers jump into action. What are these flags on the front of the... What are these flags hanging down? Or t they look like tags almost hanging down on the front of the plane. What is that for exactly? Is that have something to do with maintenance, maybe? As the pilots debrief, the team's engineers jump into action. Each aircraft needs to be moved into position. A landing light needs replacing, and each jet needs to be serviced, ready for their display. As the sun goes down, the blues have a long evening ahead. Still Marine Corps band, maybe? Oh man. It's not an F 35, the, the vertical takeoffs. Those things are so cool. Whoa! Whoa! What was that? Is that a fire truck that breathes fire? Never seen that before. What in the what in the world is that? The next morning, it's the day of the air show. The stands are up and running, the cameras are out, and the Red Arrows PR tent is in full swing. An important part of each air show is meeting the public, signing posters, even planes. I've been following him on YouTube and watching some of the videos. He's been excited to see him. They were in Canada recently, and so he's talking about it. So I can't wait to see him. I'm from Canada, and I've never seen the Red Arrows in my life. So to see them perform, it's going to be really interesting for me. The reception to the Red Arrows in North America has been overwhelming. So over 11 weeks, uh, the tour is spanning. And everywhere we've been, we've just been met with such positive, warm reactions. And the thing which I think uh, has caught our, uh, our surprise, I, I don't know why, but it's the red, white, and blue. They absolutely love seeing the red, white, and blue smoke come out of the Red Arrows. Uh, the audience everywhere have really responded to when they've seen those parts of the show. But while the pilots well, that's meet their 
probably because our colors are also red, white, and blue at the point I made at the very beginning of this. I would think, like, I I don't know. That was, that's just my assumption. It's actually kind of interesting because it, it kind of like represents the the joint cooperation between the, the two countries in a way, right? Like we have the same colors. And so seeing that come from, you know, your jets, either American jets or, you know, British jets, I don't know, it's just kind of like, almost like a symbol of cooperation and teamwork and brotherhood between the two countries in a way. I guess I never thought about it like that maybe. Not to like steal the thunder of Great Britain and your colors or anything like that, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's everywhere I've really responded to when they've seen those parts of the show. But while the pilots meet their fans, over at the flight line, the engineers are carrying out their pre-flight service of the aircraft. There are more than 60 engineers on this tour and it's their role to keep the team's 12 jets in service, looking after them before and after every display and fly past and keeping them airworthy for the many transits. Among them are 10 selected to be in what's called the circus, those that fly back seats on each of the transits. I'm allocated to a specific aircraft. I'm flying with Flight Lieutenant John Bond for the display season. So I'll look after that aircraft, I'll service it, refuel it, um, fix any faults if I can, um, and just responsible for that one particular aircraft while we're on the road. We're coming up to the eighth, ninth week now. Um, really busy, really high tempo, but we're still really enjoying it. I fly with uh, Steve Morris. That's really cool that they have female pilots as well. I know that they're kind of rare. Like we have female pilots over here too, but I, you know, they're really, really outnumbered by the male pilots, you know, kind of understandably. So that's really cool that they have them though in the specialist like acrobatic unit. I don't know if we have any female pilots like in the Blue Angels or the Thunderbirds or anything like that. That would be interesting to look at. It's uh, Red Five or Doggy as he's nicknamed. And I'm a weapons technician on the team. So my role is to look after the ejection seats uh, and also any explosive components fit into the aircraft. There's a mix of trades on the team. Avionics, mechanical, electrical and weapons engineers. They've brought spare jets with them and a lot of spare parts, which is just as well as there's been a lot of wheel changes and minor fixes already. Sometimes they've even had to leave. Wait a second, so maybe she isn't a pilot. Maybe she's just like works on the planes. Maybe I got that confused. She was kind of talking like she flew too, so I don't know. Maybe I misunderstood. And a lot of spare parts, which is just as well as there's been a lot of wheel changes and minor fixes already. Sometimes they've even had to leave an aircraft behind. On the transit out, we, um, we lost an aircraft in Iceland because of a nose undercarriage issue. Likewise, we have to jet behind in Chicago. I was flying in, we had to leave behind. Well, she was flying. Issue. But again, we got that sorted within a few days and so we probably at a later stage. So it just really depends. We have to be flexible the whole time to make sure that we can kind of work out what's the sort of most... So I'm guessing all of these guys here in the Blues do fly. So they're, they're part of the team, they're pilots, but they're not the main like acrobatic pilots that fly these during the con um, air shows, basically. They're like support crew. Bam. The Red Arrows might be known for their precision maneuvers, but what sets them apart stateside is the red, white and blue smoke that they use. My team's in charge of putting the smoke in the jets. So the red, the white, the blue, that's us. Very messy job, but we absolutely love doing it. We always do a lot of checks to make sure that we're not going to have blue and red, red and blue. Oh. So we're always talking to each other. And it, it, sometimes it feels a little bit naughty, but it makes sure that we're not going to put the red and the blue and the blue and the red, because that makes purple, which we don't like. I've actually never seen them uh, put like the actual powder in, in the jets before um, that made the the colorful contrails like that. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, you don't want you don't want purple. Put the red and the blue and the blue and the red, because that makes purple, which we don't like. On the flight line, Red 10, squadron leader Adam Collins is waiting at the centre of the display. It's his role to check safety conditions and commentate on every show. The Red Arrows always demand high standards of themselves and the pressure is on. Not only are they representing the RAF and Britain, but this time they're a team member short and their US Navy counterparts, Ooh. the Blue Angels, are watching on. Okay, so they're the counterparts to the Blue Angels. 
We train as an eight ship. We train for one jet being missing, be it through unserviceability or illness. With number two not being here, with Damo not being here, um, most of the time we'll just have a, a missing man, so we'll have a gap in the formation. But what we'll do is reposition some of the other jets to move that gap around to make the shapes as symmetrical as we can do and make them as um, as similar to the full show as we can. There's definitely a little bit of extra pressure, not just because of the significance of being at Miramar, but we have the Blue Angels here as well, so we're on immediately before them. So there's always some, um, not quite rivalry, but mutual professional respect amongst the teams. As the pilots crew in, the engineers perform their formal sea-off, a synchronised series of checks to complement the formation in the skies. OK. The flight takeoff coming right with a prize. Here we go. What? Oh, I haven't seen that before on the ground. As they take off, it doesn't take long for the crowds to see why the Red Arrows are so popular back home across the pond. The red, white and blue smoke marking their arrival and the start of the show. Plane for sure. It's the, they still look good though. A missing jet and low cloud meant for a tricky start. Mm. But by their second display of the weekend, they finished their time in San Diego with blue skies all the way. I like it when they do the so curved stuff. Like, we just done was, was great. <clears throat> um, we haven't debriefed yet, but. The feeling from everyone, you could tell in people's voices, they were, you know, everyone was up for that and it felt like a great, great display. Flying in Miramar, fulfilling a childhood dream. It's a moment on the tour they'll never forget. I know I was kind of like making fun, well, not really making fun of it, but just, you know, the Top Gun stuff. But I, I get it. Like, if you were really into aviation and wanting to be a pilot, Top Gun would definitely be up there on your list of movies that you looked up to. And you wanted to kind of emulate, I guess, Tom Cruise's character in that. And to be able to fly in the same place where you saw all of the scenes from that movie, that would be cool. Like, I've had that experience with other things before, so I understand it. <laughs> With their displays in San Diego complete, the Red Arrows now just have one show left on their tour. In just over 48 hours, they need to be in Los Angeles for the Great Pacific Air Show. But first... The I used to live in Los Angeles, by the way. I just moved back to Tennessee last year. But I lived in Los Angeles for like seven years. Yeah, cars and planes are a big deal out in California. They have a huge culture for that stuff. They need to be in Los Angeles for the Great Pacific Air Show. But first, the jets are flight. setting off to squeeze in some more fly pasts. While the pilots and circus engineers set off, the rest of the blues are left behind to pack up and head off to LA to wait for them. The team are using an A400M Atlas from RAF Bryce Norton to make sure personnel and supplies can get around. My crew uh, came out here and we started in uh, Vancouver, came down to Miramar uh, to run static uh, at the air show here. It's subtly different flying in uh, Canada and the US. There's a little different way they operate. In general, it's, uh, it's under air traffic as we used to anywhere out in the world, but there's, uh, there's nuances in language and some of their procedures. Uh, for the new guys, uh, worth, well, well worth doing the training to come out here. Well, the Red Arrows Hawk jet set off earlier this morning to San Francisco for fly pass. The Atlas behind me is now about to set off for Los Angeles to meet the team for the next stop on a very busy tour. The propellers on this are interesting looking. I don't think I've ever seen propellers that look like that. They are, they're very curved. Like, I, I don't know, I've never really studied propellers, but they just look different for some reason. In the UK, supplies can travel by road, but overseas, the team must be self-sufficient and carry everything they'll need. Passengers, die barrels, spare parts and luggage are all loaded in. Sometimes it takes more than one trip. So there's two of us on this aircraft for this job because of the amount of passengers that we've got. 
We're moving approximately 50 passengers at a time and uh, about 22 tonnes of freight. So we have to do that in two hops to get to our location, just purely with the size of volume of the freight that we're carrying. Just as the Red Arrows carry out repairs on the road, the A400M also must be maintained, whether that's fixing tyres on location or having to face even bigger concerns. Yesterday we were out in front of the crowd changing some wheels, carrying out our maintenance. The hardest thing we've had to do is we've had two incidences of birds hitting the aircraft on approach, um, which causes some work for us. But it was down in Portland, I think they were, and there was just final approach into the airport, they hit 11 birds. One went down the engine um, and one hit the prop, which required um, inspections after that. While the engineers need to... Also the poor birds. <laughs> I have a sucker for animals and when they get hurt I feel bad. Like I also understand how dangerous that is hitting a plane because that could, you know, cause the plane to crash too, possibly. So I'm not like belittling the safety of the crew or anything, but uh, always just the thought of like birds getting chopped up going into planes. Ugh. My question is, could they not have like two of these, you know, so they don't have to make so many trips? Would it be, that might be more expensive maybe doing that? I don't know. I just thought maybe if they had two of these planes, then, you know, it might make things a little bit easier. Be ready wherever the jets go. The team's photographers also need to keep up. It's their task to film every fly past and every display. There's always something that needs photographing or video in. Something needs going on social media. A post needs going out. The imagery has been used back home in most newspapers quite a lot. Obviously, <coughs> over the social media channels that the Red Arrows have got, we've been getting millions of hits. As an RA photographer, I've had many varied roles throughout my 15 years. I personally think that being the Red Arrows photographer is probably the best one that the trade have got. And you, you're just a huge ambassador for the trade, an ambassador for the RAF. And I mean, yeah. yeah you, I mean, you can't get anything better, really. Oh, With cool one job. photographer in the back of Red 10's jet, footage can be captured oh. and shared around the world during the flight to Los Angeles. So is that who was in the back of those jets were photographers then? Because I, I thought that they were like maybe another pilot or a crew or something, but now it seems like they were photographers, I'm guessing. During the flight to Los Angeles, the photographers have a special tasking. Over the Mojave Desert, the jets are joined by Virgin Orbit's Cosmic Girl, an aircraft which hopes to send satellites into space. 200 miles away at Long Beach in LA, the PR team are waiting for the footage at a special reception on board the Queen Mary liner. The I've, uh, I've been there. I've not been on the Queen Mary, but I have been to the Long Beach, um, been to Long Beach and have seen the Queen Mary. I think I'm going to get homesick for LA <laughs> watching this actually. Those arrival and their fly past time to coincide with an announcement that an RAF pilot is set to join the company's small satellite launch program. It's news that's celebrated oh. as the Red Arrows arrive in Tinseltown, Hollywood. trailing their red, white and blue smoke across Hollywood and Huntington Beach. Oh, I love Huntington Beach. I love, this is my favorite beach in Southern California. It's the quintessential like movie TV style beach. If you have ever watched the beach movies before, if you want surfing competitions, you know, all that stuff, all the classic like California beach stuff, Huntington Beach is where to go for that. You'll see it there, guaranteed. They also have a nice little restaurant off the pier there as well. Before the pilots arrive at the reception, after two months on tour, this is their final stop. Today was just brilliant. Like we, uh, to start off doing a, um, a fly pass for the uh, 747 and having a look around, um, you know, where we've just been, it's just been incredible. And then to go and fly past the Hollywood sign and then to come over here with, the, uh, with Queen Mary um, and then to go and obviously do another fly past down to Huntington Beach. Um, uh, it's, it's a day that I'll never, ever forget. FYI, Huntington Beach is not in Los Angeles. It's just outside of Los Angeles in, um, in Orange County. It's south of Los Angeles, and Long Beach kind of is too. Long Beach is not in Orange County, but it's in LA County. It's not in LA proper. It's just kind of on the outskirts of LA as well. But for the purposes of this documentary, I'm sh they're just calling it Los Angeles. They're, they're close. It's, it's a day that I'll never, ever forget. Not that you need to know that, but... 
The Great Pacific Air Show at Huntington <sighs> Beach attracts three million visitors every oh, year. Huntington. It's one of the largest shows on the Red oh, Arrows tour. I love Huntington. And the last time the team will display together this season. I'm getting homesick for LA right now. The Red Arrows are operating out of Joint Forces training base Los Alamitos. Alongside the United States Thunderbirds and Canadian Snowbirds display teams. Oh, here we go. Thunderbirds and Canadian, too. I have heard of Los Alamitos. That's one of them I've heard of before. Alongside the United States Thunderbirds and Canadian Snowbirds oh. display teams. The Thunderbirds have white planes. Why do they think they have red? But as special guests, the Red Arrows have been asked to close the show. Now we're here at the end of the tour. And we've achieved absolutely everything we set out to achieve, plus more. It's now just almost relief. And now time to just enjoy the show. You know, this is our last couple of shows of the season, not just of the tour. Blue skies, light winds, gorgeous water, and a beach that's going to be packed. It just couldn't be set for a more perfect finish. By the evening, word has spread that the Red Arrows are in town. And there's good news. A couple of days ago when we were in Vancouver, my wife gave me a call and said, um, pretty much, the baby is coming. Got back to the UK, made it with 30 minutes to spare for the, uh, the baby. Whoa. So I've got a little baby girl called Etta, and now a dad. So I've got six or seven days in the UK. I had a night at home, and it's like, I, I'll come out. I want to come out. I want to finish this. We're the Red Arrows. We don't fly as an eight ship. We fly as a nine. Oh. On the day of the air show, there's plenty of excitement. But the mood is also bittersweet. Three team members will be leaving after the tour, and this will be their last time displaying in the Red Arrows. Aww. There is that tinge of sadness that I'm trying to suppress because this is my last mm. uh, display weekend. You know, I've had three incredible seasons, and, and that's why I'm looking back on how great it's been. You know, the first year I joined, six weeks in the Middle East, amazing. The second season, the 100th anniversary of the Royal Air Force, 100 aircraft fly past over Buckingham Palace. Uh, and then my third year, yeah, an 11 week tour in North America, which finishes here at Huntington Beach, California. I mean, if I could have written it and asked for it, people would have laughed at me and told me to go away. So I, I'm just so grateful that it's happened. So how many seasons do these pilots usually stay in the Red Arrows? Is it just three? Is there a limit to it? And do they spend the entire season in a particular location like North America or in England or in the Middle East? How long are the seasons usually? Are they 11 weeks like this all the time? And when are the seasons? Are they in the summer? As the engineers get to work, on the beach, the crowds are building. The team have a big audience to impress, and everyone wants their last display to be a success. Ready to commentate, Red 10 squadron leader Adam Collins is in position. A quick word on the radio from Red 1, and he gets the signal to start the show. Red, hello, up. go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the Royal Air Force Aeromatic Team. With clear blue skies, the team are able to perform their full high-level display routine and their most dramatic manoeuvres. Wow, I just love when they do like the circles and the curves and all of that stuff around. Wow. Oh, that's a cool, that's a cool angle right there. Wow! It's a little loop-de-loop. -loop. <laughs> so there's seven planes, is that right? Seven? That's cool. <laughs> As someone who like loves that's aviation, cool. it's absolutely amazing to watch how close they are and how yeah. really, they're so precise in their movement. Yeah. It's pretty cool and kind of also breathtaking and sort of nerve-wracking all at the same time. Yeah. The buzz around here is incredible. Just the whole air show buzz for these three or four days. There's banners everywhere, posters everywhere. Everyone's really pleased to see us. It's a real honor for us to be closing the show. The Red Arrows ending There's... their tour better than they could ever have imagined. Their Nine North American planes. adventure has given them much to celebrate. They've crossed a continent, flying the flag for Britain all the way.
Okay, so there we have it, the red arrows. Thank you guys so much for recommending this video to me. It was really cool to get to see the acrobatic team from the UK. Of course, prior to watching the Vulcan Bomber video, I had no idea about the red arrows. I didn't even know that they existed. It was also extra special, I think, getting to see them over here in the US. It kind of made it a little bit more relatable to me in a way, especially being out in California. As a matter of fact, they were out doing this air show while I was living there, so you know, I could have gone to the air show and I didn't even know about it. <laughs> Well, maybe one of these days I'll get a chance to see it in person. I don't know, actually, I've never been to an air show before. But I think it would be fun, especially at Huntington Beach. There's always something going on in Huntington, whether it's surfing or paddle boarding or volleyball, you know, tournament, you know, whatever. There's always some sort of event going on over at Huntington. Is what kind of makes that beach stand out to me as well. So yeah, if you ever visit Southern California, go to Huntington Beach, <laughs> I guess is what I'm trying to tell you. There are more videos on the Red Arrows that you think think I should watch let me know down in the comments or if there are any other subject areas involving the Air Force or planes or anything let me know and I'm sure that a lot of you guys can answer my questions also down in the comments so if you would do that I would appreciate it also if you enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet Roger here and I thank you as always for watching stay tuned for more stuff like this coming in the future and we will see you next time